Well, I'm at the beginning of another track. I've actually been down this track not long ago with a friend of mine, but his Disco 2 was on street tyres, so kind of had to abort the mission. But I was keen to check it out, so I've come back in the Cherokee. I'm going to wear down to 5 PSI and see where this goes. sway bar off on this one. All right. is kind of difficult so once again I've come out when you see the snow it's always the most tricky kind of snow sugar snow look you can't really compact it so it doesn't stick together so this crust that's on top now is not really able to support the Jeep's weight so trying to push up these walls here it's kind of tricky I mean the reality is it's not actually that bad past this point but then, you know, you're in it and you've just got to make that decision. When you're on your own, sometimes you just got to think about these things. But I think I'm going to turn around and uh, try and check another vi uh, road. putting some air back in. I'm going to find another place to camp. Hopefully somewhere around here. It's a beautiful spot. It's quite remote. It's a beautiful lake time there. I'm going to go check it out. Doable. 
before I get up into this, I'm going to uh, air down again. The snow's a lot deeper than it looks. This is a uh, compacted, this track, but if you start spinning on it, you'll, you'll start to sink basically. Well, here we are, arrived at camp. Um, I camped in this spot with a friend of mine not long ago, to be fair, and uh, so I knew it was accessible. But this is an absolutely beautiful spot, much more beautiful in the winter than the summer. The windmills kind of aren't amazing, are they? But you know, they're off in the distance there. You can't quite see them behind the tree line as from where I stand, and they don't really make a lot of noise. So, but I'm gonna get the vehicle leveled, get camp set up, get some firewood. There she is, the new addition, the 40 plus step. Check it out. Whew, getting hungry. Real hungry. Few things to chuck in the back as usual, clothes and a hygiene bag in there and the sleeping bag. Basically it. Whoa. Oh yeah, and carbon monoxide detector. Chuck that in as well. Should be it. Change. 
change that to the tent. For those of you who are interested in these front runner chairs, they are nice. They're way overpriced. They're very robust, but they're heavy. So if weight is a factor, or you're trying to keep weight down, they are heavy. For a chair. Considering what other things are on the market. They're also shite in the winter, because they're not warm, so something like this helps. But yeah, that's me set up, all done. Pretty easy these days, you know, with the setup, especially now with the new diesel heater thing at the front. You know, everything's all plumbed in, permanent, so I just need to put a hose in, aka the elephant dick, and then the whole tent's warmed up. But um pretty sure this is a Bigfoot free zone. I did smell something earlier as I was driving up here, but um I couldn't put my finger on it, so used condom, maybe. But you know, there's a fine line between a dogging site and the smell of Bigfoot. It's about getting experienced with one or the other. And that way you can kind of start to become a bit of an expert in at least one of those fields to be able to rule the other one out. But um, admittedly one is easier than the other to get into, really. So um, anyway, I'm flipping hungry. I think I might have a piece of chocolate and then get the sled, the snowshoes on, get some wood and I'll be ready. I'll be ready, be chilling. I've got easy food tonight. <laughs> Expect I'll cook on the open fire tonight, but just in case, top this up. I think my efforts deserve a double bagger. Oof, potent. It's the reactor, living up to its name. About two minutes. thinking you need a chainsaw you're right I need a lot of things okay can't afford it That's going to have to do. Definitely not going to work. Give it a try then.
Well, I thought I'd put in a little bit of extra effort, get some bigger logs to last me the evening. I actually forgot my torch, flashlight, sorry, in other parts of the world. Um, so apologies if it gets a bit dark later, but uh, it is a really nice time of year to be out. I know that I'll get probably a lot of shit for not using a chainsaw, but uh, I just don't have one. I just don't, I just don't have one. Um, I understand they're not that expensive, but just on a real budget right now, you know. What I've got's what I've got, and uh, just the way it is, you know. And obviously, when you get a chainsaw, you probably want to have some protective equipment too, given you're all out here on your on your own, or I am anyway. So there's there's the other side of it. Well, with the fire going, I don't need to worry about using gas anymore. I can just boil my water in the little pot and keep it warm in the flask. It's always a good solution, really, for the winter. I tend not to bother with the rotor packs on the side of the gull wings like you normally would see me roll around with. I find that the two litre flask and just kind of doing rotation with snow is plenty, even for washing up and stuff. And once you get a fire going, as long as you carry a pot, you can pretty much just make boiling water, warm water, really easily. But uh, I haven't actually seen him around anywhere yet. Talking about Bigfoot. Um, I thought I smelt his ass a little while back, but uh, yeah, not sure really. But on the subject of wildlife, I've only really seen three elk this winter. Um, I know they call them moose a lot here when they translate it to English, but Eli is Lomjeta Eli Posvenska, so that translates to elk. It's, it's called European elk, I think that's the classification. I've only really seen a couple of bears since I've been in Sweden for six years and uh, yeah, no, I mean, I guess they're waking up around now anyway and, and moving up into the fjells for the reindeer or going after reindeer calf and then I guess they come back down for elk calf later um, but I, I know that the elk numbers aren't as high as they used to be so I wonder I wonder about the impacts it will have on, on, on the bears I assume if the bears go after more reindeer they'll be shot to greater numbers to control the cull on the reindeer and thus for man dominates nature suffers and Dildo Baggins revels in the fact that he's got free range of the woodlands without a predator in sight. I guess it's just a, a vicious circle, really. But I think, hands down, this is one of the best locations that I've been in this winter. I like the open space and the view. Not easy to find, actually. Normally I'm dug away in woodland and it, it isn't that exciting. Um, but this is an absolutely lush spot. It's a great spot to finish the year on. Well, it's been a pretty lovely camp so far, although look at my eyes, it looks like I've been smoking crack. This fire is, um, well, the wind direction is, is kind of favoring going into the back of the vehicle. So it's, it's making it pretty difficult to just be there and uh, get ready for dinner, which is what I'm doing right now. So I think I'm going to move the vehicle and uh, hope the wind doesn't change, which is one advantage actually of that roof tent. It's just going to change direction again, isn't it? There we go. 
go. My eyes have forgiven me. Ooh. Det er mattid nu, men jag ska jag ska ha korv. Korv. Basically hot dogs. That's what I'm having. I'm having hot dogs tonight. I'm gonna keep it simple. I fancied it. And these suckers are grade F. Grade F for fantastic. The fire is a bit too hot to cook on, but maybe I can drag some embers out. Use this bad boy. No, I didn't forget the mustard. I don't like mustard. Not in hot dogs, anyway. I've got hamburger dressing and I've got dried onions and that's the way I roll. Let's not judge a man by which way he puts his sausage in a bun. Um, the main point is it tastes great. There we go, the morning, and uh, it was a pretty pleasant night to be honest. The windmills were, uh, windmills, the, the wind turbines, I don't even know what they're called, were um, making a bit of noise, but it was kind of like a nice noise, like woof, woof, woof. sort of just put me to sleep. It was either that, or Bigfoot was swinging his, you know what, around out, outside the tent and sort of trying to put me to sleep early but uh it was surprisingly cold last night i'm in this bag here so comfort is about minus 25 degrees c and last night it was minus 15 so uh yeah it's a very very good bag the warmest bag i've got actually i think it's the warmest bag thermo sd the polar ranger not a cheap bag but uh a great insurance policy when you don't want to be relying on this kind of rubbish 
but uh, that's purely just for comfort and luxury and getting dressed in the morning and stuff. And it's heating up my engine. Well, it looks like winter's coming again. They always say that in April. But uh, yeah, this morning, cup of tea, obviously very important, and a double bagger. And had a little bit of birch bark left over and I've got the fire roared up again, just in case I want some breakfast. I obviously could cook on white gas, but you know, might as well burn that away and uh, clean the place up a bit before I go. But the tent is now packed away and all the condensation removed. It's one of the main things that I'm always pretty uh, strict about. Uh, with myself anyway, I mean. I'm going to switch it off now. I'm going to have a look at the engine first. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice and warm. Really warm. So uh, that should start basically straight away without, without any issues. You know, it should sound quite happy. Looks like a better fire for cooking on this time round. Oh, I think I might have accidentally urinated on the Murica when I fired out a dehydration laser last night. I expect the French would probably consider that part of the cooking process, so I'll let that one slide. I've basically got enough for one pancake, that's all I've got, and uh, I'm going to have it with that. I'm getting a few comments about this in some of the videos, that people are in uproar. Those of you who obviously like maple syrup. Um, this is Dutch. Skankstroop. I can't even say it. Dutch is a difficult language, it's kind of like you're trying to cough up a lung. It's a difficult thing to sort of, to do if you haven't grown up in the Netherlands, but um, this isn't supposed to be maple syrup. This is not a substitute for maple syrup. It's just a completely different type of sauce. And it's a Dutch sauce and it's made from um, zout. It's made from zout. I don't know what that is. I think basically it's, um, you know, like gonna be just everything that you probably don't want in your body made into a sauce. But I will agree with you, maple syrup is better. Yeah, but like for me to buy a tiny amount of maple syrup here in Sweden, I think I have to pay close to $10 for like something like that. So it's just, and this was a gift, all right? So these are my excuses, so just leave me alone. I've only got one shot at this, and I definitely think it's too hot, but I'm tired of waiting. That looks horrific. I think that's going to have to do. It's a bit hot, but whatever. This will be disappointing, but uh, I'm going to try and enjoy it. I'm sure it'll be edible anyway. It looks horrific. But it tastes all right. Thank you. 
Well, full disclaimer, this is the part of the video where I talk a lot. One thing I'd recommend if you do come out into the wilderness or wherever you are, is a pair of binoculars. These are 8x42, so you can see stuff up close as well, like insects and butterflies if, you can't, if you're into that thing and you can't get close enough. Um, they're really, really good. You know, I've seen lots of stuff through that, lots of birds, wildlife, bear, elk, you know, loads of things. So um, it's definitely worth having. It does kind of enhance the experience and allow you to kind of see so much that's out there. And I wouldn't have spotted those things if it wasn't for those. But this has been a really chilled camp. I was going to do another night, but I'm um, obviously not going to film it because it's much of what, what you've already seen, really. But I was thinking about staying up here another night. I think I'm going to head back down though and make my way back into uh, back home basically and and uh, spend some time with the family, obviously. Uh, but it's been really good. I was going to say this is probably my last camp for this winter, but given how much winter likes to come back at the end of winter, um, I might actually probably be out again. So, uh, yeah, although I've got the four litre to, to do up, the Renix, um, I've got some sheet metal in for that now. So my plan is to get that in the workshop, take all the rusty metal out and get that thing looking really good and uh, get it painted and get it running nice. I just need to change the harmonic balancer and then the engine, I'll do the water pump at the same time and then the engine will be really nice. But um, But this diesel has had a lot of love this year. Uh, it's had lots of parts that I've made for it, like the three link and all the stuff on the axle. I've made the new drive shaft for it, bumper tire carrier. God, I've gone crazy really, and I'm really decked it out. And, it, and it's just such a great vehicle now, such a such an awesome vehicle. There are some things on it that I'm still, you know, not entirely that, that can be better. Um, for example, the rooftop tent. As much as I love it. The family's getting bigger once again and um you know which is obviously a fantastic thing it's what you what we want but i don't mean it like that i just mean that you know i've picked the wrong tent really and and i wish these guys would just offer one that opened like this and then opened that again if they made that tent or something similar like the eye camper but you know just just in that price range that, that opened up like that so it was i think this is too meters by 140 so one and a half meters by two meters ish so if it opened up again and it was like two meters by two meters or 220 by two meters then you've got a, basically a future proofed tent for for like a, a four you know for four people basically but um I don't know really, I, I, I just, I've never, you know what I'm like, I, I really, I've never really been into rooftop tents um it works for me, and I get a lot of shit on the channel about having a roof tent on my Jeep. Um, but the reality is, is like I said in the last video, like in, in, the, in the summer, you need an enclosed space that does not get opened until bedtime because of the flies. And it's very convenient to set up, you know, the, the, the mosquitoes and everything and the biting midges and everything here is just this intense, man. So uh, the roof tent has been a godsend for that. And we have ground tented a lot as a family as well, with the Jeep and without. And, um, you know, with kids it can be difficult because they like to run in and out of the tent and like let all the insects in. that basically like start coming at you at night. I've talked all about this before, I know. But um, anyway, I'm going to make my way back. Um, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been an absolutely lush camp. And if you saw the time lapse, which I peeked my head out the tent at about 3.30 a.m., you would have seen the Northern Lights just over there. It was actually a really nice display on last night. I only really caught the edge of it with the, with the time lapse. Um, but uh, I, I, when I was taking a leak out, out the window, I spotted it. It was, it was a pretty good display considering it said there was only a 4% chance of seeing it. So hopefully you saw that, but it was a, an absolutely beautiful evening. But anyway, I'll see you again in another video. Just want to say thanks to everyone out there for watching. Thanks to patrons for supporting the channel. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you again pretty soon. Hopefully.